Good morning. Happy Friday. It is time for our high five and let's come up a little bit higher. You know, I was listening to um, Andrew Womack yesterday and he was talking about the most amazing story of Smith Wigglesworth and his boldness. His boldness. I mean, he was strong and courageous and, you know, but he wasn't always that way. You know, he was talking about this lady that has this huge tumor, you know, looked like a baby in front of her. And she couldn't walk. She had been so sick and she had to have two people stand and hold her. And and uh, Smith Wiggles were, said to the two ladies on either side, let her go. And they said, no. And, and he said, let her go. And she fell forward right on top of the tumor. They picked her up again. And uh, Smith Wigglesworth said to the ladies, let her go. And they said, no, she'll fall again. And Smith Wigglesworth said, I said, let her go. And she fell on that tumor again. And, um, uh, and then the third time, he said, let her go. And there was a man out, out in, the, in, the, in the audience that screamed at her. Oh, you heartless person, leave her alone. And, and Smith Wigglesworth said, shut up, I know what I'm doing. And he pointed to that lady, the little ladies, and he said, let her go. And, and they didn't want to, but they let her go. And she started falling, but then she caught herself, and she stood erect, and the tumor fell right out. The tumor fell right to the ground. Now, Smith Wigglesworth wasn't always that way. He had a wife named Polly. And, you know, he he leaned on Polly for everything. Uh, he was a plumber. And um, I found this paper uh, yesterday after I had heard Andrew Womack tell about the Smith Wigglesworth. And here it's going back. I've read this once before on one of my high fives. But here, she Polly died. And, and he raised her up. And she woke up. And she said... Um, Let's see. One day, Mr. Wigglesworth's wife died, and she, he, he prayed to be released from the dead, and she was. Raised from the dead, and she was. And he said, you're not leaving me, he told her when she came back to life. What will I do? And she says, Smith, you're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, she said. And I'm leaving now. Do Now do the will of God. And she laid her head down, and she went to heaven. And once she was gone, Smith Wigglesworth repented. I'm re reading this. He repented and repented and repented and finally accepted his call. But that was only the beginning. The real change of Smith Wigglesworth did not come until he started taking communion at 4 a.m. every morning. Like clockwork, every day he would begin the day remembering his covenant with Almighty God by taking the bread and the cup. Every day he lived under the influence of that covenant, and every day he became more and more bold until finally he became the most the boldest man in of God in history. Wow, that is the power of communion. You know, if you take communion haphazardly, it's not going to do a thing for you. You know, if you're going to take it religiously, it's not going to do anything for you. But if you start remembering the power of the blood if you start reminding yourself and and one of my favorite new books is by Benny Johnson she is the wife of Bill Johnson and it's called the power of communion and this is how they got their strength back this is how they got their healing back this is how they got their power back and uh, they, they they take communion several times a day I was telling my husband if the doctor told you to take, if you were sick and the doctor told you to take medicine three times a day, you would do it like clockwork because you believe that doctor. Do you believe the blood of Jesus? Do Are you willing to take it at least once a day? Are you? I think, you know, we're coming into a time where we're going to come into extreme, unusual um, uh, times of, of uh, just spiritual warfare. And this is spiritual warfare. Communion is spiritual warfare. And we can lean on the Lord of God. We can lean on the Word of God. We can lean on the power of the blood. We can lean on, on the promises of God that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. But if your Bible is just going to sit there, it's not going to work. If you're, if you're going to just forget about the communion elements, 
it's not going to work. You have to do something about it. You have to take part in it. God's already done everything he's going to do. Jesus isn't going to go on the cross and die again. We need to part to ache of it in faith. And prophesy over yourself when you take communion. Prophesy, this is a day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. And that blood will just give you so much power to do everything you need to do that day. Be willing and obedient, and you will eat the good of the land. God bless you. Bye-bye.